and leaders on stage with us today. A day in which we celebrate and recognise excellence in the areas of arts, sport and service. With this, our Club Garen Colours Assembly. I invite you, our student body, whānau and parents of the school to join with us in recognising the dedication, talent um, that some of our outstanding students here at Garen College have. A special mention must be made to Club Garen and its president Michelle McCashin, who with her team ably provides support and financial assistance to many of the activities and endeavours that our students are involved in. I would now like to invite and welcome Eric Panza to the podium. Eric is a past student of Garen College, being head student of sport when he was here, and in fact, he still holds the school beat test record at 15.7, uh, which a record he set in 2011, so it stood for six years. He is a graduate of, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong, <laughs> uh, Quinnipiac University in the USA, gaining a degree in psychology. His travels have extended across America and around the world as he continues to pursue his dream of playing professional football. A proud alumni of Garen College, we welcome him back today to share his stories of setbacks and successes. Eric. Well, good morning students, teachers, family, friends. I was once just like you guys, sitting in this gym, Oh, there we go, cool. Sitting in this gym, wearing that same uniform, and even being taught by some of the same teachers that are still here. So I've been in your shoes. I struggled for the first couple of years at Garen. I had very big footsteps to fill that my very bright sister had left. I just couldn't find my place at Garen until I received the suggestion from a teacher aide and the principal at the time to attend a school leader's course at Outward Bound. Outward Bound changed the direction of my life. I returned from Anakiwa with a clearer vision of who I was and the purpose I had in this world, and also a better understanding of how I could be a school leader at Garen College. This course allowed me to clearly outline my values, which was crucial for what was to come. I returned for year 13 and I became captain of sport, along with having a much more positive influence on the school. I finished Garen in 2011 nearly six years ago, and since then I've been presented with many more impactful opportunities, opportunities that I jumped at. In 2012, I accepted a scholarship to attend Quinnipiac University in Connecticut, a northeastern state in America, two hours away from New York City. My scholarship was to play football for the university's team while studying a bachelor's degree in psychology, and this was just the beginning. My responsibilities included five to six university courses per week, which was about 15 hours of class time, plus all the study hours outside of that. Our team trained twice, played, trained every day, and played twice a week. But there was so much more to this experience than just football and classes. After my first year, I received the opportunity to travel to Cape Town, South Africa, with a group of 12 other students, many who I'd never crossed paths with. These students were from all sorts of backgrounds, within our university of approximately 8,000 students. The trip was the first time I truly got to know people outside of my comfortable social circles. We assisted in running a school holiday program for very underprivileged students, primary school kids to be exact. These children lack some of life's basic needs, things we take for granted every single day. Food, water, shelter, love, care, education, and most relatively, opportunities. We broke down sexual and racial barriers through universal languages of smiles, football, and dance. And we gave these children hope and an education for a better future. Along with the school holiday program, we got to experience the city of Cape Town. The hardest thing to digest was the vast disparity of this city. On one side of the road, there were very nice modern day homes, and just on the other side of the road, there were corrugated iron shacks, many without power. There were two completely different lives being lived by these people, and one group never would blink an eye to the other. Unfortunately, racism still exists, and so does the remnants of apartheid. 
I was fortunate enough to return for a second year to the same school, and this allowed me to take more from the trip, hear more stories, ask more questions, and grasp a greater understanding of why Cape Town is the way it is. From these two experiences, and in particular the young children of Vikey Primary School, made me realize that I must live a life of purpose. I need to have a purpose every single day that I live and not be willing to let it go to waste. Because what those children taught me is that life is precious and whoever you are, you must, not, you must make the most of it every single day. As I left South Africa, I wanted to do more, but I couldn't. However, what I could do more was for myself. I began to pursue my newfound purpose in life, to make a difference in this world through what I believe being the nicest person I can be to those around me. This drove me to do more within my university community, to have a greater impact on the people I interact with every single day. Previously, I had limited myself to a smaller group of people, but after this experience, and meeting many students from other areas of the university, I made more of an effort to step outside my current friend zone, which consisted of mostly just athletes. After an application and interview process, I was given the opportunity to be an orientation leader for the university. Along with 75 other orientation leaders from all corners of the university, sorority and fraternity students, student government, international students, and LGBT students, we collaborated to create an environment that was welcoming and comfortable for incoming first year students to our university. We assisted in acquainting them to their new surroundings and what the experience would consist of, along with helping these students begin to build new friendships with their new classmates. This led to my final year at Quinnipiac, as I searched to find a way to leave my mark on the university and its people. I believe I did this by just being who I was, pursuing the purpose of mine to make a positive difference in this world. During my final semester, I collated with students across campus to implement a few powerful campaigns. The It's On Us campaign to stop sexual assault and the You Don't Say campaign to encourage people to think before they speak. I was a president of our Student Athlete Advisory Committee, the student voice for our athletic department, and I worked directly with the vice president of our university <coughs> excuse me, on curriculum changes and developments for the student experience. I also volunteered for a week with Habitat for Humanity in North Carolina to help construct three homes which ultimately would give hope and safety to three families in need. I did all of this while I was researching and writing my psychology thesis. After reading hundreds of psychology articles and constructing a format, I completed a 52-page thesis on gratitude, purpose in life relative to well-being. This was my university experience and it was filled with many opportunities. Opportunities that I took to improve my individual being, all while making an impact on the people I interacted with. I graduated Quinnipiac back in May of 2016 and set off on my journey to fulfill my dream of becoming a professional football player. Since then, I've been presented with many more opportunities matched with just as many challenges and setbacks. After having a successful football career at university, I believed I was ready to give the professional game a crack. I was given the opportunity to trial with a Premier Division side in Ireland, and without hesitation, I got on an aeroplane and flew there. It was the ideal opportunity. A great professional environment, a good co coach, and many talented players. These players were at similar levels to myself, with many above my ability too. But what they all had to their advantage was they had been in a professional environment, and that was something that I had not been in. I ended up spending 10 weeks on trial, when a trial should only last a couple of weeks. Over those 10 weeks, the news I got from the coach went up and down. Ultimately, I just wasn't ready for professional football. And my lack of a European passport or visa also was a downfall. I left the club and left Ireland. But this experience, although considered a failure, it gave me hope. It showed me that I had the ability to be there. But as you'll learn in life, some things you just cannot control. My next stop was England, where I was given the opportunity to play lower level semi-professional football in Truro. Because it was semi-professional, I didn't need a visa. All I needed was a working holiday permit, and I obtained that. Another thing you'll learn in life is that many promises will remain unfulfilled. I was promised various things by the assistant coach and chairman, which often came delayed or never at all. 
For the first month, I lived on the couch of a mate who I actually went to Garen with. Eventually, I moved into a caravan in Truro, and I was, at, I was able to work, however, the promised work I was offered never came, and the 30 bucks a week I was getting for my football wasn't getting me very far at all. It was a very challenging experience. I was being treated inappropriately, or I wasn't being treated appropriately, and I questioned why I was doing this, why I was on this journey. This questioning led to a focus on myself. I developed myself to be as professional as possible while in a very amateur environment, as I knew this would be beneficial to me down the road if I were to get the opportunity to go to the next level. After four months, the environment became more and more negative by the day, and I made the decision to leave the team and leave, leave England. I returned to America, and after a few more setbacks and a few more unsuccessful trials with teams, a new opportunity emerged. I was given the chance to train under a former professional coach who has an organization that gives players the opportunity to truly prepare for professional football. This was a challenging and demanding experience. I was living in a two-bedroom apartment with up to 10 other players at a time who were also training like me. The coach challenged me daily whether I had the ability, the commitment and the mentality to make it at the professional level. But over four, year, four months of this experience, my ability developed I improved technically and I got stronger, mentally and physically. Because of this, I was given the opportunity to travel with a team that this coach selected to Denmark to play exhibition games in the hopes of getting scouted by professional teams within Scandinavia. After four months of grinding every single day to better myself as a football player, I then realized that prior to that experience, I had not been ready for the professional game. But that opportunity gave me two things. One, the preparation, tools, understanding and the mentality of what it takes to be a professional player. And two, another opportunity to pursue my dream of becoming a professional football player. And like every other opportunity over the last five years, I jumped at it. I went to Denmark and the, let the, my performances against some of the best professional teams do the talking. My performances paid off and I was offered another opportunity to trial with a team in Sweden. My performances my trial was successful and I signed another semi-professional contract. I was at a stage where I just had to keep pers persevering on my path, trusting that a better opportunity will come. I was playing at a level a lot lower than the teams we had played against in Denmark. However, it was a foot in the door. Once again, I focused on developing myself, training individually as much as possible, as well as with the team. As my time was coming to an end in Sweden, with my, my 90 day visitor visa expiring, I was in search of a new opportunity. After the many hurdles and challenges that I kept encountering in the USA and Europe, I decided to change tack a bit and return home to New Zealand. I took an opportunity with Team Wellington, another semi-professional team that plays in the New Zealand National League. This opportunity has already presented me with experiences that lacked in my prior opportunities overseas, so hopefully this is a fresh beginning I need to realize my dream. The opportunities over the last 18 months, they were all ones that I believe would get me to the next level, to help me achieve my dream. But I have yet to achieve that. Something has been missing to help me make that next step to the professional level. I have done everything as professional as possible for myself, but I still have never signed a professional contract. Each day, I continue to strive for this with patience and perseverance, trusting that if I continue to control my actions, my thoughts and my effort, eventually the appropriate opportunity will arise. I have not given up. I have not looked for the easy way out and I will not quit. I have continued to be committed on this journey that I set out on. Now, that might have been a lot for you guys all to take in, but I share this with you to give you a bit of a background as to what I want you to take away from this. It doesn't need to take an opportunity like Out or Bound for you to reach your potential and find your place at Garen College. What it, what it will take is you embracing the experience, establishing relationships, and enjoying the path you're on. Look, life is unpredictable. Life is precious, life has its challenges, it has its difficulties. But life is there to be lived. It is there to be experienced. Life is full of learning, whether it is in the classroom, at home, or overseas in different cultures. There is always the opportunity to learn. And the biggest opportunity to learn is about yourself, who you are, what you believe in, and the endless potential that you have. 
Over the past six years, I've learned a lot. I've learned to fail, learned to struggle, learned to be challenged, and as you can see, I have overcome all of these to be here today. Contrary to this, I've also learned to succeed, I've learned to experience, and I've learned to embrace life and live it to the fullest. My journey has taken a lot of patience, perseverance, and persistence to get where I am today. I've used resilience in my pursuit of my dreams, and I use every single challenge to become a better version of myself. To all of you, I encourage you to be open to new opportunities, get outside your comfort zone, to welcome something new and uncomfortable into your life, to better you. I encourage you to embrace failure, learn and grow from it, and allow it for you to succeed. I encourage you not to shy away from challenges. Instead, embrace them, relish them, and use them to thrive. Find your purpose in life, whatever it may be, and pursue it. Allow it to lead you on a journey towards happiness. Most importantly, enjoy these moments here at Garen. Embrace the now and enjoy the present. Don't look back. Don't look forward. Just be still and enjoy life, moment by moment. Remember, Succeeding isn't about achieving, it's about learning, and it, when, when it comes down to what I have learned, I have succeeded. Thank you. Thank you, Eric, for coming and sharing your story with us. Um, I guess it really shows how with the right mindset and the, uh, a mind that searches for opportunities, you could really develop yourself and, uh, and really help other people by the sound of it as well, by your experiences in Cape Town. So thank you, and we'd like to present you with a small token of our gratitude and uh, wish you all the best for your football career. So.